No tigers. That's the news today from the magician who wanted to use three of his wild animals for a magic show near the Strip. Yeah, Jay Owenhouse is withdrawing his application to use the big cats as part of his act. He spoke with our Jeff Gillen this afternoon. Good evening, Jeff. And good evening, everybody. Owenhouse tells me the show, minus the tigers, will go on. There was controversy and consternation that tigers would be housed here at the corner of Paradise and Sahara, a stone's throw from the Strip, and next door to apartments or high-rise condos. We are moving ahead with the residency, and our tigers will uh, have to sit uh, this six-month period out. Um, why, would it, why were there? That's magician Jay Linhouse telling me his biggest stars, literally, will stay home in Montana. His original plans raised eyebrows with county government, neighbors, and animal activists. Tuesday, the news came he's pulling his request, Tigers be part of the show. It's always referred to as the Tiger Show, and, you know, we're not a Tiger Show. We're, we are a world-class magic uh, illusion show. Um, we just happen to have Tigers as part of our show. And um, it's really a show that's about a family. Um, working together, and part of our family is our tigers, so of course we want them in the show. In a city where location's everything, this location was the wrong place, say animal activists. The animals belong in a proper sanctuary where they have room to roam outdoors. Carrie LeBlanc is the executive director of Compassion Works International, which advocates for animal well-being. We're thrilled that Mr. Owen House has heard the community and our concerns about the use of uh, tigers in Las Vegas. What Owen House still plans here is a tent and a magic show. Originally, the Tigers would have been in their own area, and Owen House has said they would have been secure, properly housed, and well cared for. The location is currently empty. The monorail garage is there, and the monorail moves overhead. It's a block away from one of the busiest intersections in town. Not the best spot for Tigers, says Commissioner Tick Sagerblum. It's his district. The site itself, in my opinion, was not conducive to to tigers. It just was a very, very noisy place. In 2020, the commission had approved the show with tigers on land near Mandalay Bay, but that show fell through after the owner lost the property. Two years later, Owen House's tigers won't get to strut in a tent off Sahara near the Sahara. Instead, a revised proposal, minus animals, will be heard at commissioner's February 2nd meeting of the zoning commission. The local economy has seen a lot of adversity over the past few years because of COVID lockdowns and massive layoffs in the hospitality industry. But if what we heard today at Allegiant Stadium turns out to be true, Las Vegas will see a huge rebound in 2022. Our Steve Wolford is there live with details on today's preview of Las Vegas. Well, that's right. Uh, as we know, Allegiant Stadium is going to host the Pro Bowl in a matter of a few weeks. But earlier today, some economic all-stars were on this field to offer up a forecast for 2022. And it looks pretty good. Preview is the economic Super Bowl. MC and Las Vegas entertainer Susan Anton kicking off Preview Las Vegas at Allegiant Stadium. The Vegas Chamber event gives business owners and economic experts a chance to take a close look at the local economy in the year ahead and even enjoy PowerPoint presentations on the jumbotron above the field. This is the first and only one-of-a-kind business event to be on, held on the field at Allegiant Stadium. Vegas Chamber President Mary Beth Seawald says it's shaping up to be a great year. 2022 is looks to be a phenomenal year for economic development and diversification here at our destination. Conventions are going to be coming back stronger than ever. Our inter international tourism uh, is going to be coming back as well. It's also a barometer of how businesses feel and how they are going forward. And it's nice to see so many people here today because uh, our future is bright. Governor Steve Sisolak says events like this are a way to get the pulse of business owners also seeing the value of this event, the LVCVA's Lori nelson Craft. It gives the entire business community some skin in the game to see what we all can do collectively to move our economy and our community forward. But the real beneficiaries, business owners themselves, like Mark Prose. This specific event is our customer. It's the business customer that allows us to be able to speak B2B, business to business, and then they can speak B2C, business to the customer. And Matthew Delaney. 
I've been watching these educational programs and they're beyond what I expected. Um, it's, it's really providing a micro and macro picture that's making me feel pretty comfortable. Am I reassured? I am very reassured. <laughs> And the economic forecasters also see international tourism coming back strong in 2022. Fingers crossed on that. And looking ahead, we had a couple of big events to look forward to in the future. There's the NFL draft and then beyond that, the Super Bowl. And for us, it's been uh, a very difficult uh, nightmare, to say the least. Our dining room table conversations are, are very rough. Clark County families with some tough decisions to make regarding what school their children can go to next year. So imagine your sibling has gone to school outside of their zone for years now. They still can, but you won't be able to go to that school anymore because of changes in policy. It's the case in the Clark County School District that is dropping zone variances next year. Crisis in the Classroom investigative reporter Tiffany Lane shares how families are asking the district for exceptions. A lot of tough conversations happening for district families right now. Some deciding if their kids will have to go to a different school. Others trying to figure out if they'll pull their children out of the district altogether. One, two, three, four, five. Is this a game? These it's are a like song. Them. Here Mortensen smiles when she talks about going to school. But she and her family are not happy about new rules for next year. There are two problems. Kira can't go to her current school, Divich Elementary, and she'll be separated from her sister. The Mortensons found out when this email was sent from the district. It essentially disallows you know, my youngest daughter to be able to attend the same school as my oldest daughter because she's on a zone variance right now. Zone variances allow parents to enroll children in a school outside of their designated zone. But next year, this process is dropped. Who's this one? I only know who this guy is. Who's that guy? Joey. Leading Kira's dad, James, to reach out to the district and trustees for help to keep his daughters at the same school. The responses I received, some of them just quoted the statute or the rule change and saying that this is something that they have to do because of overcrowding. One email he shared with me from the district said that the change happened to address overcrowding, saying the zone variance process added to the issue. Shooter. Yes. While Kira cannot stay at her current school, her older sister Mila can because she has been grandfathered in. This exception exists for certain older grades at each school level. Because I want to see my sister. The goal of what we want here is for people like us to be able to have an option to you know, continue to send both children to the same school. They could absolutely be impacted academically, socially, emotionally. The Schultz family is looking for a similar exception because they are in the same boat. Second graders Mark and William will have to find a new school. The twins' older brother Logan can stay at their Henderson school, Kesterson Elementary. What do you think about not being able to go to the same school anymore? Mm, sad. Why does it make you sad? Because I can't mainly see one of my brothers, and uh, I don't, and I don't have any friends there. So, what is the option for students who are on a zone variance right now? They can go to their zone school next year, or the district has provided a website where they can go apply for a change of school assignment, or COSA. Under COSA, there is a list of schools with available space across the district that you can apply to attend. If those get full, there's a lottery. Mother Patricia Schultz, a retired principal from the district, says not allowing students to stay at their current zone variant school puts families in a challenging position. Kesterson is not on the list of COSA school options. For us, it's been uh, a very difficult uh, nightmare, to say the least. Our dining room table conversations are, are very rough. Kesterson is closest to our home. And so geographically, it's closer to our home, um, but it's not the school we're zoned for. And she says if her kid's elementary school doesn't get added onto the list of school options under COSA, there will be some difficult decisions to make. If they are not eligible, then I, it hurts our hearts, but we may leave Clark County School District. All um, of your kids. All of our kids. I, I can't, why would we take our kids to a bunch of schools all over the valley when we've invested so much 
um, with our heart, with our finances, with our time in this in this community that we've been with. I guess we should probably unpack your lunchbox since you're not going to need it for a while. James says he is still waiting on an exception so Kira can stay at her current school with her sister since Divich is not on the list either. He says if they end up being separated, it would cause a lot of problems. It would mean that one child was chronically late, and that's, you know, tardy, not acceptable. Uh, also, it just detracts from the ability for us to create kind of this uh, environment where we have our children and we're involved. My wife goes in and volunteers at the school regularly. Now it's the waiting game for the Schultzes and the Mortensons. Who needs to address the situation for you guys that is not doing it for you right now? As I understand it, CCSD had given the option to weigh in on this situation. Um, it wasn't something that was widely televised or I would absolutely have been there to do or say something. Um, I feel like CCSD is really sort of saying this is our final answer. We're not going to really make any exceptions and any emails or correspondence that we're sending are really falling on deaf ears. Again, I get it. It, maybe the rollout could have been a little bit different so it wouldn't be so impactful to thousands of families. You know, maybe start with kindergarten next year and first grade. And I would miss my brother I, I, and I would miss my friends and my teachers and my principal. I'm working to get information from the district on families impacted by the drop in zone variants if their school is not currently on the COSA list. But reach out to me if you're also impacted by the drop in zone variances. As always, I'd like to hear from you. School tips at news3lv.com or call 702-805-0489. Hi everybody, I'm Reed Cowan from News 3 Las Vegas. We want to thank you for checking out our YouTube channel. Remember, you can always see more of our videos by clicking on the video links. And also don't forget to click that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any of our YouTube updates.